Welcome to another physical sciences lesson. We're going to be revising the topic of electromagnetism today. So come along with me and let's have a look at what we're going to be doing. So if you remember, electromagnetism deals with an important idea. It deals with the idea of the relationship between electric current and magnetism. And in the first instance, we recognize that when you have an electric current, whether it be in a straight conductor or a loop or even a coil, what we will recognize, it can produce a magnetic field. And so that's the first relationship that we're going to look at. But there is another relationship. And the other relationship is to say, if we have a magnetic field, can we produce some sort of electric current. That's known as electromagnetic induction. We'll have a look at that a little later. But let's start by looking at the first type of relationship, the relationship that is related to the starting point. We have an electric current that produces a magnetic field. And we can see this happening all around us. In fact, that's the question I'd like you to think about. What difference does electromagnetism make to your life. Now you see, science isn't something that's just found in textbooks. It's something that we come across every day. But it's important for us to recognize as we see things around us, ah, that's the principle of current electricity. Or that's the principle of the heating effect. Or that's the magnetic principle. So look out for those. What difference does electromagnetism make to you? Well, think about it. Be on the lookout for it, and as we explore further and as we revise this section, let's have a look at it. So I want to remind you about this idea of a, a magnetic field. A magnetic field is just a region in space. And it's like a gravitational field or an electrostatic field. But the only thing is that when we have objects that have magnetic properties. So objects with magnetic properties, and there are not many of them, when they're placed into this region of space, they will experience a force. And that's what a magnetic field is. It has a certain shape, a certain pattern. Um, it's strong in some places, it's weak in other places, and we recognize it's really important. In fact, around the Earth, there is a magnetic field. And that protects us from some very harmful rays that come from the sun that are part of what we call the solar wind. And so we must never underestimate this idea of a magnetic field. Uh, what we recognize is that there's a follow-up idea of magnetic field, and that's magnetic flux. Magnetic field strength is represented by the letter B. This is the strength of the magnetic field. Now, flux, we're going to see, is the relationship, it has a letter phi, and it's the relationship between the magnetic field strength and a perpendicular area through which those field lines pass. And so phi, the magnetic field, uh, the magnetic flux, is made up of two components, the magnetic field strength and the area through which these field lines pass. And we're going to use this quite extensively as we look at different aspects of electromagnetism. Now, here is a beautiful picture of a magnetic field. This magnetic material, which is probably iron filings, so little pieces of iron that have been placed on a piece of paper, and the paper has been tapped, and underneath it is a magnet. Now, at this stage, we don't know what's happening at this end or what's happening at that end in terms of the direction of the magnetic field. What we see is that at those two ends, there's a strong magnetic field because more iron filings have been attracted. Look, they're close together. They're, uh, they're not spread apart. Over here, they're quite spread apart. So when they're close together, it's a strong magnetic field. And in fact, because it's pointing in the same direction, the field lines will point in the same direction, we call it a pole. And so when we're dealing with mag magnets and we're dealing with the magnetic field, we have two opposite poles. Uh, we could have chosen any letters, 
but we've decided to call them the North Pole and the South Pole. So we have two poles, North and South, and they are different from each other, uh, just in terms of the force that will be exerted on a magnet uh, that's outside of the North Pole of another magnet. And so this brings us to the idea of what's the direction of a magnetic field. Well, we can test it, and the way we test it is simply by using a compass. The direction of force exerted on a free-moving North Pole. Now, a free-moving North Pole is a fancy name for a compass. So a compass is just a, a little uh, base with a needle on it, and on top of the needle there's a pointy bit, and on that pointy bit we have a piece of magnetized iron, and it has a needle on it. As I said, it's a little attached to that pointy bit there, and that end is north and that end is south. So if I bring a magnet over here and I make that north, then this north pole will be repelled, this south pole will be attracted. Opposite poles attract in terms of the magnets. And so we can determine the magnetic field by placing this little compass inside a magnetic field to give us the direction. If the compass points away, we're saying it's the field lines are away from the North Pole. If they're uh, moving towards the end of a magnet, a bar magnet, then we'll say that is a South Pole. It's being attracted. The north end of the compass is being attracted by the, um, the South Pole of the permanent bar magnet. So just have a look. The direction of force exerted on free of a magnet when placed in a magnetic field. That's the direction. So the direction of the field is always the force on a compass. The direction of the force is indicated by the direction of the North Pole of the compass. Here we have another situation. It's also an example of a magnetic field. Let's have a look and see exactly what's happening here. We have a battery and a conducting wire. Recognize that there's a current that is passing from the battery and it's passing through this conducting wire in that circuit. And on this piece of paper here, we've sprinkled some iron filings. Those iron filings have formed a magnetic field pattern. The magnetic field doesn't look anything similar to the one that we saw around the bar magnet, but it's still a magnetic field pattern. The magnetic properties of the iron filings have put themselves into a circular shape. So you can see it's forming circles uh, around this iron uh, uh, in around on this piece of paper around the conducting wire that's coming out. So the conducting wire is vertical, and at 90 degrees to that, there are, is the circular magnetic field that's taking place. It's not like the magnetic field of the magnet. So remember at the magnet, when we had the bar magnet, and if we had to say this is the North Pole and that's the South Pole, we would get a butterfly type pattern where the field lines, we would write them in as coming out of the North, coming away from the North, being repelled back the North Pole and being attracted at the South Pole. This is nothing like that. It's a totally different shape. But we can tell the direction in exactly the same way. So what are we going to use? That's right. We're going to put into this magnetic field, onto this piece of paper, where we see the iron filings have formed the circular shape, we're going to put little uh, compass needles, little, uh, small little plotting compasses. And here we have one, and what you can see about that one, it's telling us the direction of the current. It's saying the red end is the direction in which the magnetic field would be going. And so as we move it around, it would make the circular pattern. The point is that the compass shows us the direction of the magnetic field. Now, it's very important that we are able to determine and able to predict in which direction a, a magnetic field will be associated with a current passing through a conductor. And so we have a number of rules to do, do that. And the first rule that we're going to look at is the right-hand rule. Now, please remember, don't get mixed up. 
It's not the left-hand rule, it's the right-hand rule. So if you're right-handed, you need to take the pen out of your hand and make sure that's the hand that you're using. I happen to be left-handed, so I know it's the other hand. And look at exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use the thumb and the fingers of the right hand to give us the direction of the magnetic field around a straight conductor. And the way we do it is we say that the thumb is the direction of the current. So if we've got this, pretend for a minute that this is a conducting wire, and the red end is the direction in which the current is passing through, so that's the positive end, it's going from, from positive to negative, it's going up, uh, let's say that would be negative then, we're saying the current is going up, the direction of my thumb points in the direction of the current, and the curl of my fingers tells me the direction of the magnetic field. So if the current is coming out, you can see it's going in a circle, circular pattern like that, and I can do it in any direction, whether it's going up or down, uh, the important thing is that it's going in a circular direction. If I were to switch it around and I say the direction of the current is down, well then you can see on this side the current is coming, uh, the field lines are coming out and on this side the field lines are coming in. Whereas if I turn it around it will be exactly the opposite. Now you don't want to have to draw three dimensional shapes of this so we have a special way of showing both the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field. And we're going to use a series of dots and crosses to do that. So let's have a look at this particular example. The orange circle there represents a piece of copper wire that we've cut in cross section. And the dot is telling us that the current is coming out. So the direction of the current is out. Now, have a look here. The thumb tells us the direction. So if the current is coming out, the thumb must be pointing out of the board, over here like this. So in which direction will the curl of my fingers be going? Well, I know it's going to be a circular pattern, and I'm now going to indicate the direction on the circular pattern by using my my fingers again. And so if the thumb is out, on this side the current will be up, but over here the current is across to the left, and over here it's down, the, th the current is still coming out, and it's in that circular pattern. So over here you can see it's anti-clockwise. It's not going in the same direction of the clock. Uh, what is important is that this is not a uniform magnetic field. It's not the same everywhere. And so the further we go away from the current carrying conductor, the weaker the field goes. And we can represent that by drawing a second circle that's further away. The direction of the field lines will be in the same direction though, but they're not close together. They're actually weaker. Similarly, if I had the direction of the current going in, I'm going to use my thumb, I'm going to point the thumb going in, and the field is in the curl of the direction of my fingers. I'll draw one field in that direction, the second one a little bit further away from it, field direction is the same, going in for the cross, the cross means in, and we can see here the direction of the field is opposite. They are not concentric. They are not the same distance away because as we move from this point, from here, the field gets weaker. As we move outwards, the field decreases in its strength. Now, let's just be very clear about this and look at it in another perspective. And if we had a long piece of current carrying conductor, what we'd recognize is this one, the current direction is from positive to negative, and if we now use our thumb in direction of the current, we recognize the uh, magnetic field would be coming out at the top. Look, my fingers are pointing out over here, whereas they're pointing in over here. Pointing out, I'm going to draw these as little dots, and over here, 
I'm going to draw them as crosses. Now, there's one last little thing that I want to mention, is that the strength of the field can vary, and we use the symbol B to show that, and we use the symbol, the unit Tesla T to measure it. Very quickly, magnetic flux is related to the strength of the field and the area. So over here, you've got lots of field lines passing through that area, the same area, but fewer field lines, so this one would be weak. And the magnetic flux, as I mentioned earlier, is this combination of the field intensity and the area. But remember, these two are at 90 degrees. They're perpendicular to each other. And we've got to use that angle theta to correct if they're not at 90 degrees. So I think this gives us a good overall summary of the ideas of the electromagnetism. There's a little bit more that we need to do, but first let's take a break. We'll be back straight after this.